The U.S. Navy has finally acknowledged that videos appearing to show UFOs flying through the air are real. The U.S. government has a long history of deceiving its population, especially with regard to medical research, surreptitious monitoring, and torture operations, and the presence of WMDs in Iraq. Considering the repeated lies, it is understandable to suspect the government of covering something up. Online conspiracy theories abound, and we assure you that you don't want to go down that rabbit hole if you watch them for a lifetime. What does it signify, though, when some of the secrets and rumors turn out to be true? We now know more than ever about the covert operations of our country, thanks to reports that have come to light, declassified papers, and government leaks. The truth can occasionally be stranger than fiction, as evidenced by the FBI's Bigfoot file and the CIA's clandestine Dragonfly program. Join us as we explore the terrifying government secrets leaked on the internet. One, the Pentagon does have a UFO program. The Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program used to be one of the Pentagon's most top secret initiatives, and it was specifically tasked with looking into sightings of unidentified flying objects, UFOs. Despite the agency claiming funding ceased in 2012, the Department of Defense never officially acknowledged the initiative. Although the Pentagon has said it has ended its covert UFO investigation program, the work continues under a new name and in a new location within the Office of Naval Intelligence. There, analysts continue to investigate the mysterious close encounters between military aircraft and unknown flying objects. Although the program itself is not secret, it is not appropriate for Pentagon officials to discuss it publicly. But there it was, in a Senate report outlining the next year's funding for the country's spy services. Former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid is among the retired officials hoping to find evidence of extraterrestrial vehicles through the program. However, the program's primary goal is to determine if any other country, especially a potential adversary, is employing innovative aviation technology that poses a threat to the United States. The Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program was revealed to exist in 2017 by the New York Times. The unit and its $22 million in funding, according to Defense Department officials at the time, had expired after 2012. The Defense Department later validated the statements of those involved with the program who indicated it was still active in 2017 and beyond. Since its inception in 2007, the program has been overseen by the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence, which was originally part of the Defense Intelligence Agency. However, the Senate spending plan specifies that the Office of Naval Intelligence will be responsible for coordinating this effort with the rest of the intelligence community. There was never a lapse in the program over those years, but details about its administration after 2017 were scarce. The Pentagon then formally, and supposedly transparently, formed the All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office on July 15, 2022, to gather and analyze reports of unidentified abnormal phenomena. The organization claims to have found no proof of aliens or alien technology so far, while it has acknowledged that it is unable to provide satisfactory explanations for some of the reports it has received. 2. The FBI had Bigfoot under surveillance The current depiction of the legendary savage stems from a tidbit of news from 1958. Large ape-like monsters feature prominently in folklore from all corners of the globe. Some people in the United States have believed in the existence of Bigfoot, a tall, hairy humanoid in the forests of the Pacific Northwest since the 1950s. Evidence such as sightings and even photographs have led to investigations and debates concerning the veracity of the Sasquatch. The FBI, it seems, keeps records on everyone, including fabled beasts like Bigfoot. You can find the FBI's Bigfoot file in the depths of the Freedom of Information Library. Only after a person's death are their files made public, suggesting both the reality of the creature and the agency's belief in its death. To be clear, this is not proof that the FBI believes in Bigfoot any more than the decades-long research of UFOs by the United States military proves the existence of aliens. 3. The CIA's Dragonfly Our minds may run wild with ideas for secret equipment in the spy trade thanks to James Bond and other spy movies, but reality far surpasses fiction. In late December 2003, the CIA opened its own museum close to Washington, showcasing numerous previously unseen instruments of the spy profession. One such item was a recording device that mimicked tiger poop and was used to monitor army movements in Vietnam. Then, a small dragonfly appeared. 
This relic from the Cold War era of the 1970s fooled the untrained eye into thinking it was a common green darner or, if you squinted, a blue-faced species. However, upon closer inspection, it becomes clear that this seemingly harmless insect is anything but. We've taken our first major step into the intricate world of insect robotics with the development of an insectothopter, a bug-sized spy. At the time when the microprocessor was still cutting-edge technology, this was an astonishing feat. Over half a century after its initial flight and several years after the public debut, newly declassified records reveal every intricate aspect of the CIA's creation of this remarkable micro-robot. Although the bug was on display in the CIA's museum for years, many of its specifics were kept under wraps until anti-secrecy website The Black Vault founder John Greenwald submitted a Freedom of Information Act request in the summer of 2013. Greenwald obtained a stack of documents in January 2020 outlining the Dragonfly's design and construction. The story goes all the way back to the height of spying during the Cold War. However, there were still areas that were more difficult to infiltrate than others, even though bugging or listening in on conversations with electronic devices was a strong and relatively new espionage tactic at the time. That's why they went for retro reflectors, the little glass beads that send laser light right back where it came from. The CIA employed a comparable technique in the 1970s to detect vibrations through glass windows. The true difficulty lay in covertly placing the tiny retro reflectors at strategic locations such as on a window sill, above an embassy wall, or next to a specific park bench. The CIA had previously attempted to implant a microphone into a cat, but the effort had failed. The government agency needs a new strategy. The CIA's Deputy Director of Research and Development, Don Ressier, saw a need and he devised a solution. Robot insects might sneak past without being spotted if used in place of microphones on common mammals. The project, which he dubbed the Insectothopter, was handed off to Charles Atkins. The Dragonfly was a remarkable engineering achievement that performed flawlessly in laboratory settings. The major flaw of the Insectothopter was that it required the pilot to manually point a laser at the aircraft at all times. Not so simple in actual wind, but a wind tunnel makes it easy to practice. The Insectothopter may theoretically be flown in winds of up to 7 miles per hour. The flight testing was successful, but it proved unable to maintain control in a crosswind. When compared to the billions of dollars spent on modern spy satellites, the program's $140,000 price tag seems like chump change. Unfortunately, the CIA's new Dragonfly spy was never put to use, and the project was cancelled. Although nature still has the upper hand, our understanding of insect flying and the electronics required to recreate it have come a long way in the previous 52 years. A number of robotic Dragonflies have been in development at the University of Delft since 2005. The Delphly Micro, their smallest product, has a wingspan of 4 inches and weighs just 3 grams. This robotic bug is much more nimble than its progenitor and can fly for 3 minutes on a single charge. Something the CIA's engineers could only have dreamed of is its ability to transmit video footage. Despite the failure of the first insectothopter, Adkins and his team discovered what could become a robust foundation for future insect robotics. In 2023, how would a CIA drone like this look? We don't know. The information is top secret. 4. The CIA's top secret fish, named Charlie. The Central Intelligence Agency pondered the feasibility of developing an unmanned underwater vehicle, or UUV, in the 1990s. Therefore, the agency created the UUV to gather water samples and constructed it as a technological demonstrator. Being the CIA and all, the UUV was outfitted with a cunning disguise, that of a common catfish. The Office of Advanced Technology of the Central Intelligence Agency set out to study the feasibility of unmanned underwater vehicles and other aquatic robot technologies for the agency's primary mission of gathering intelligence. The CIA's robot was designed with a focus on speed, endurance, mobility, depth control, pinpoint navigation, autonomy, and radio communications. The robot would have to hide its true purpose as an intelligence collection tool. After much deliberation, the CIA decided to adopt the persona of a catfish, and Charlie the catfish was born. Charlie's orders were to gather water samples without being spotted, in contrast to the mission of a real catfish, which is to eat rubbish and other fish on the bottom of freshwater lakes and streams. 
Charlie has a ballast system and pressure hull for stable depth. It was now partially submerged. Engineers devised a tail that swings from side to side to act as a propeller, precisely like a genuine catfish does, despite the fact that real catfish don't utilize propellers. It was also piloted with a portable line-of-sight wireless control device. Whether or not Charlie ever engaged in any real cloak, dagger, and catfish work is unknown. The CIA is still mute. If Charlie had to be controlled by a wireless line-of-sight radio command system, that would significantly limit the catfish's utility in the field. There's also the issue of where exactly a catfish robot would be useful. Catfish farms were a relatively new development in North Korea. They were unusual throughout that decade. Perhaps the truth about Charlie will eventually be revealed, just as we learned about the CIA's other one-secret technologies like the nuclear bird drone and the covert dragonfly spy. 5. Military efforts to create a lightning weapon Lightning bolts are usually only used by the gods in battle, but in 1967, the CIA began to explore if they, too, might summon lightning whenever they wanted. A scientist proposed the idea in a proposal that was sent to the deputy for research special activities at the CIA, who in turn passed it along to the head of the air systems section. Although the scientist's identity has been blacked out of the released CIA document, the proposal does refer to having spoken with the agency in the past, suggesting that their ideas were given some consideration. The idea of directed lighting stems from the discovery that bolts of electricity travel along a step leader, or a route of ionized air. When the leader stroke connects with the ground, a circuit is formed, and a current of about 300 million volts at 30,000 amp flows, forming the lightning proper. The scientist advises using artificial leaders, which would be wires measuring a few thousandth of an inch in diameter and several miles in length, to cause discharges to occur when and where we want them. Lightning would strike the wires as they descended from the sky after being dropped from an airplane or rocket on a spool into a storm. The scientist explains, this technique is feasible because the main discharge will occur through ionized surrounding the wire. Like the leader, the wire isn't strictly necessary for the lightning to strike. If it were to break, the bolt would still go off. The CIA may use this method to unleash what appeared to be the wrath of God on a target without giving away their involvement, since a relatively cheap barrage may be laid down, and there should be little or no evidence left what caused the lightning storm. If possible, this is a feature that would be really appreciated. In 1967, this might not have sounded like such a crazy idea. With Operation Popeye, the U.S. Air Force attempted to enhance rainfall and disrupt the Ho Chi Minh path the Viet Cong utilized to supply themselves through the manipulation of the weather. The CIA was also fond of supernaturally inspired psychological operations, like the one called Illumination by Submarine, in which they planned to convince the Cuban people that the end of the world was nearby having a submarine surface discreetly and launch flares above Havana. It appears that this scientist was a seasoned expert in the field of meteorology. In the proposal, it is mentioned that patents have been developed for the commercial exploitation of the technology, but they wanted to give it away to the U.S. military first. The concept is sound from a scientific standpoint. Research in both the United States and China has benefited from the practice of producing lightning with artificial leaders, often cables carried by rockets, in the decades after the technology was developed. However, controlling lightning is not a straightforward task, and the CIA's proposed barrage has not yet been demonstrated. Later, with the help of the Seoul Outdoor Lightning Research Center in the United States, DARPA conducted experiments with triggered lightning and advanced the field significantly with Project Nimbus. However, the focus was on fundamental scientific study and lightning strike prevention. The latest F-35 Lightning II aircraft has been found to be especially susceptible to lightning strikes. They insisted they weren't looking to harness lightning for offensive purposes. Possible explanations for the lack of interest in weaponizing lightning include the perception that it is not possible or the belief that it is less effective than modern air-launched weapons. Alternatively, the CIA might already have that region covered. In the CIA's records, controlled lightning is not mentioned again. However, the commercial patents that were supposed to be released never appeared. The CIA may still have hopes for a secret Thunderbolt arsenal, but we have no way of knowing if they abandoned the idea or if it was absorbed into some other black project. 6. Military Dolphins for Iran 
The Iranian military is keeping a close eye on the water, despite the fact that most people are worried about its nuclear program. Iran's arsenal includes some unexpected weapons. Retired Lieutenant General Paul Van Riper commanded the opposing force in a 2002 U.S. military exercise that simulated an invasion of Iran by an American task force. Against the Americans, he employed a variety of tactics, including motorcycles, small fast attack boats, land-based missile batteries, and even suicide strikes. However, it seems he neglected to deploy Iran's killer dolphin squadrons. Russia supplied the Islamic Republic with dolphins in 2000 that had been taught to attack ships. The Soviet Union was responsible for the initial training of the dolphins. When the project's funding dried up, the dolphins' previous trainer bought them and took them to a dolphinarium. Unfortunately, as interest in them dwindled, their caregiver eventually had to sell them since he couldn't afford to keep them fed. The dolphin unit was sent to the Crimean Peninsula from its base in the Russian Pacific region in 1991, following the dissolution of the Soviet Union. There, the dolphins were taught to use harpoons on their backs to kill enemy frogmen. Also, they would swim at enemy ships while carrying explosive sea mines as part of suicide strikes, all while being able to tell the difference between the sounds made by Russian and American submarines' propulsion systems. Iran obtained the killer dolphins from an undisclosed source and relocated them from the Black Sea to the Persian Gulf. The Russian daily claims that Jurid continued his work in Iran following the sale in 2000 and that this work was exclusively military in character. The original dolphins, depending on the species Jurid employed, may still be living after 50 years or more. He could have used additional killer dolphins to attack Western shipping if he had taken the time to train them. 7. Lost Plutonium in the Himalayas in the 1960s, the United States and India joined up for a mission that, if successful, would keep tabs on China's nuclear progress. The team had planned to install sensors fueled by the radioactive element Pu-238, but they had to leave the Himalayas due to unsafe conditions. The sensors were no longer there when they got back. Although the plutonium bombs have not been located, residents blame them for the catastrophic flooding that has occurred due to the melting of mountain peaks. Eight. The Psychoelectric Weaponry While it's possible that psychoelectric weapons are among the government's secrets, only the most dedicated conspiracy theorists would even consider the possibility. Oddly, Muckrock, a journalism organization that specializes in submitting Freedom of Information Act requests with state and federal government agencies, got papers about mind control seemingly by mistake. In an email, journalist Curtis Waltman requested data on Antifa and white supremacist groups from the Washington State Fusion Center, WSFC, a cooperative effort between Washington state law enforcement and the federal government. Not only did they answer his queries, but they also attached a file to his reply. Some of the photos appear to be from an article in Nexus magazine about a case brought against the NSA by one John St. Clair a Kiwi in 1992. A Kiwi said the NSA had the ability to assassinate U.S. citizens covertly or run covert psychological control operations to cause subjects to be diagnosed with ill mental health, and was keeping records of their supposed techniques. Even though the government did not likely generate these records, the WASFC feels they are important enough to archive. Whether or not the government experiments with psychoelectric weaponry and remote mind control is unknown. Could these papers shed light on the unsolved case of 24 Cuban government officials suffering hearing loss, dizziness, sleep and vision problems, tinnitus, headaches, fatigue, and brain damage after being the victims of mystery sonic attacks? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.